and welcome to my shelves of sh uh, tat rubbish. This is where I keep all my stuff. The reason I'm talking you through this is, well, twofold. One, when Mike and Lucy visit me here, I've often found them staring. They'll often go, what's that, what's that? They will actually ask. Two, if you'd visited me here at home um, and were sitting there, at some point, I would talk you through all of this. Uh, so this is you doing that without having to go to all the trouble of travelling out to me here in rural Herefordshire. So, a tour of my stuff. I don't know where to begin. You'll notice a lot of hats. I do like a hat. Um, but I had a great many more. I still have them in a box. I've culled the collection and brought them down to just some particularly stylish numbers. Some of them do have um, significant associations with me. This orange hat here. This was from... I made a show in the States. I don't know how many years ago? That's probably about six years or something, maybe 10. Uh, when every week I did a different job. So I was a, a taxi driver in New York, um, and for a while I was a logger. So I, I, I did logging. I wasn't particularly good at it, actually. I did learn how to operate a machine called, called a dangle head processor. Most complicated thing I've ever done. Um, that provides music, which I'm not doing now. Uh, yeah. Um, it's not like BAFTAs and Oscars and stuff. These are trophies from two very highbrow, intellectually driven television shows I presented many years ago. Um, you might remember Brainiac, high level, serious science show, and a thing called Total Wipeout, which was um, sort of a platform for intellectual debate and discussion whilst people fell in mud. Uh, coming here, there's some books. These are large coffee table books, not on my coffee table because that's covered in bike magazines. Uh, this is a model of a Land Rover that, um, uh, yeah, I built it. To be honest, I got this several years ago and started building it one Christmas. And, and I'd had quite a lot of Christmas cheer. And when I came to revisit it earlier this year, I discovered I'd made some fundamental mistakes deep inside it. So I had to rebuild it. I did that, got it to this stage. It's magnificent. But what I've also done is lose the tires at some point. Um, and I can't find them anywhere. So that was a mistake. Uh, there's more books. These are an assortment of books. Shall I talk you through the books? No, I won't talk you through the books. There's this that my parents did for me on my 21st birthday. And it's, it says, this is your life. This is a really sweet thing they did. And these are all photographs and things from my life by the time I got to 21. Isn't that nice? It's got me with my cousins, me with my mates. September 1977, Andrew Miles, Philip White, you might be watching, Patrick Letbury, Adam Groom, Neil Palfreyman. That's the name of somebody from school, isn't it? Yeah. Why are they, I'm the only Muppet in a blaze. <laughs> oh no. Oh God, I wish I had noted this. I've only just realized. Here's all my little mates in the garden of, not my house, it's got a swing in it. We weren't that posh. But in, in the suburban garden in Birmingham with one of my mates, they're all wearing groovy t-shirts, sweat tops. I've got a school blazer on. Never mind. Um, so yeah, that's books and stuff. That's another hat. That's a motorcycle helmet. Uh, over here, now, the, ah. Again, if you were here, you'd be sitting there, you'd be thinking, this wine's gonna run out in a minute and I'm gonna have to listen to him without wine assistance. But you don't have to worry, have a glass of wine. These two photographs, very important. That's from Buttermere, which you probably know is my favorite place in the whole world. That's me and my youngest brother, Nick, and it must be 30, something years ago. Um, that's the tents that we used to take. So we'd go and camp up in the Lake District, him and me, and go walking around all of these hills. And then in the evening, we'd go to the bridge and spend far too much money on far too much beer, and then wake up with terrible headaches in that little tent, which I do still have, although it is useless. This is us back at the same place, my brother and I, probably 25 years after, or 30 years after that picture was taken. We'd gone up on our motorcycles. Yeah, we both look a little bit older. Um, moving across, this is um, the Bullet Mustang, but I have a 1968 Mustang 390 GT in Highland Green. You might have seen it, which is basically that car, but full size, obviously. Uh, ah, now, uh, this, Rimac. 
Um, fabulous car, electric. I think they were about a million and a half quid and it's that's the one I crashed off a Swiss Alp when I got to the end of a hill climb and for reasons I still don't understand, just carried on powering through and went off. Had a massive crash um, during which, while I was trying to get out of the car, it landed upside down, it fell about 300 and something feet. I've told you this, I couldn't get out hanging off my seatbelt, er, crash helmet on, tried to get out and I've got my watch caught in the seatbelt like that and I couldn't, ah, I thought, oh, somebody will come and get me. And then I heard the fire start and I thought, no, I really, really should get out. So the only way I could get out was to take my watch off uh, and, and push the door open and drag myself out because I'd broken my leg. And I was rescued, all was good, but I realised later on I've lost my watch. Uh, and the car had burned for three weeks before they could go in it and somebody found my watch and it was sent back to Rimac with the car and they very kindly put the watch, which doesn't work, in this presentation box made in Switzerland, carefully perfected on the 10th of June 2017 by the British. Me. Yeah. Other interesting and fascinating things on here include this crash helmet that I wore in the Grand Tour Special um, in Mozambique when I was riding a motorcycle and I fell off that bike wearing that crash helmet five to ten times a day because we were riding off road and I'd, I'd said to production, yeah, I bought the bike from a supermarket. Can you get me a decent front tire for an off road tire so it's got some authority? Yes, they didn't. It was on a road tire. So as soon as I hit certain types of dust, and then I'd be testing that crash helmet. This, I hope you're taking notes. Bl blame Mike and Lucy because they did ask. This box came from Zach, who I presented a TV show with last year. And it's, he says, you've got the whole world in your hands. He's a geologist by training. And it's got a piece of rock taken from the summit of Mount Everest. And this is salt from the Dead Sea. So you've got high and low. No nice? This is a tiny silver chimp because the name of my production company television production company is Chimp. And that's, that's about the size of the company there. You see it's scaled to reflect it. Uh, down here, that's just another crash helmet. That's just something I like having around. This, if I go horse racing, which we do, we have a race horse. This is my horse racing hat, très chic. And these are my very, very, very expensive but fabulous binoculars that I use to watch our horse come stone last every single time. It's interesting, that horse, right, Mindy's in charge of it. The ground is never soft enough for it to run. It can only ever run if it's been raining for months. It's basically half horse, half frog. I'm convinced of that. Over here, this, this, these, are, these are cars, um, they're Renault race cars. Um, I did drive a Lonzo, it's not that one, but it was in those colors. Um, made a bit of a mess of it after several laps. I had to bring the car back in to have the tires reheated, which is not something the engineers have done before. I have that from my time working at Renault UK in the press office. They also gave me a model of my company car, a Renault Megane Coupe, that I crashed on my last day there. So they hit it with a hammer and put it in a present presentation case, but I've lost it. Um, these are cowboy hats. Again, from that same trip when I was a logger, because for a week I was also um, a cowboy. I, I, this is, yeah, maybe not. In Texas, um, why I kept them is, I was fascinated that these ranches that I was working with um, were proper Texan royalty, really. And you have to wear a felt hat in felt hat season and a straw hat in straw hat season. And if you wore the wrong one, you would be shunned socially. Um, that's, I think, the final thing to show you. Oh no, there's one more. This is from my time with a certain well-known car show that rhymes with Bop Fear. This is a very modest amplifier for when I play my bass. Um, here on my own. The problem with playing bass um, is it's not um, it's not really a, a sort of solo instrument. You can't, you know what I mean? You need a band. Um, that's a guitar signed by every member of Status Quo. Come on. Uh, and then finally, to conclude my tour of my shelves of stuff, um, this model is here. 
Uh, it is quite magnificent. I bought it at one of those charity auction events where you buy things and then the next day get shouted at by your other half for spending too much money on stuff you don't need. Um, I keep it here displayed prominently pretty much entirely because Mike Fernie absolutely adores it and wants it more than anything. So I quite like him having to look at it every time he comes in. And that concludes your riveting and fascinating tour of my shelves of stuff, uh, which means if you do come here to visit me in rural Herefordshire, you shan't have to sit through that again. Mm -hmm.